Welcome to the first episode of What's Brewing with Brian. As I promised you in my last vlog that I'll be making videos with Brian and bring you all the cool things he has to offer for us. So here I am making the first video. Since it's called Brewing with Brian, we cannot start without Brian. So let's get hold of it. Come on. Mr. Mindful Mug. How are you, Brian? I'm good. I'm so, good. Are you all ready for us? I am. I am. You ready to brew with Brian? Yeah, they are. All right. Let's go. Let's do it. So, Brian, what's brewing today? What else? Beer. Oh, beer. <laughs> what do you have in store for us? We've got a Belgian ale. Um, this is a homebrew. Beer kit, and I got I got it at Avid Brew Co. in downtown St. Pete, Florida. Nice, great place to get all your beer and brewing supplies. Um, so I want to give them a little shout out. Avid Brewing Company in St. Pete, Florida. So nice. So we'll get our free beers from there. Uh, the, I hope so. All right. Yeah. So let's start <laughs> with it. All right, guys. So we have unboxed this home brewing kit. We have made a separate video for unboxing of this kit where Brian had explained each and every ingredients in detail. So if you want to know more detail about it, please check out that video. So Brian, what we are doing next? What's the next step after this? That's a really good question. We're going to start by filling up this pot of water. We're filling up this pot with water and we're going to heat up that water while these grains are in it. And that's the first step. Next step, take our green. Open that. And this is just a pop bag we're gonna pour the green into just to keep it from dissipating in the water. It's kind of like a tea bag. And then we're just gonna pop that in the water. All right guys, so our uh, water um, is just about done. Uh, the, gr the grains are about done steeping. So it's time to get the malt extract ready. We're just gonna, um, which, turn this heat down real quick, because we don't want it. To, we don't want it to boil just yet. So, step one is uh, for this liquid malt extract. You got to loosen this up a little bit because it's really thick right now. It's like a kind of a molasses, uh, you know, texture. So all you got to do is just put it in a pot on the stove. Just put some water in the pot. About halfway. Just gonna stick that in there. Remove the foil um, packaging here. As you can see, that's really thick and really thick and sludgy. Transfer that over here. Put it on a burner. Just put that on like maybe medium heat. Doesn't have to be high. Just enough to heat it up and, and kind of loosen that, loosen that uh, material up. But the other thing we need to do is get the grains out. You don't want to leave the grains in too long. Uh, it can create some uh, kind of bad flavors if you do that. So we just take our bag and then, as you can see, the water has changed uh, to um, kind of a light brown color now. Make sure we're stirring up as the malt extract's going in. Otherwise, it'll burn to the bottom of the pot. See how much the color's changed? Now it's got that dark, but kind of gold, more of a golden brown color to it. It's starting to look like beer, although it's, importantly, it's not beer yet because it's still considered wort. 
it hasn't fermented. But it is looking nice. We're gonna bring it to a boil, and then during the boil, at, at, at different inter intervals, we're gonna add hops to it, so. Also very important to stir continuously during this stage as well as you're adding the dry malt extract. So it's time to put in the next set of hops. Take a whiff, of course. Yeah, I've added two uh, batches of hops, different uh, varieties of hops. Um, and we're about to add the third variety. Uh, it's called Saz, that's S-A-A-Z. Um, so once we have this, we're just going to boil for one more minute, and then we're going to uh, take the take the wort off the heat and cool it down, so we can add in our yeast, which is the final step. Once again, we're going to give that a nice whip. Mmm. Do you have camera man, dude? One more minute of boil. But if you're doing like a double IPA or triple IPA or a really strong, you know, pale ale, you might want to you might want to add hops during secondary fermentation, and that's called dry hopping. But we're not going to be doing that with this one. Pretty straightforward process, but you're just going to want to make sure you set, a, set aside plenty of time for it. You know, you can't really rush through it in, a, in an hour. You're going to need a good, probably, probably at least four hours. So you, you know, don't schedule anything <laughs> that you're going to that's going to put you in too much of a time crunch. Because, because you know, it definitely needs time to, you know, for all the ingredients to come together. And um, yeah, our one minute is up once again. It looks good now. Looks like everything's nice and dissolved. So we're gonna remove it from the heat entirely. Whew. And the next step is we're gonna get our wort chiller ready to uh, chill this down to 80 degrees. Um, and now it's time to chill down the uh, wort and we're going to use this handy dandy device called a wort chiller. Um, it's optional, you don't necessarily need this, but it's going to save you a lot of time. Um, and, you know, cool, you can also soak, um, or you can fill your sink up with ice, like make an ice bath. Um, but this is definitely going to be faster than that. Um, yeah, so the idea is to get it down to 80 degrees. Now your wort chiller just sits down. Oh, and make sure you sanitize your wort chiller. Very important. I did that before, you know, before we uh, we shot. But uh, so your wort chiller just sits down inside there. And we're gonna turn the water on. So the water's circulating through these um, cop through the copper tubing of the um, the wort chiller.
take about probably half an hour at least to get this cooled down to 80 degrees, which is the temperature, the safe temperature for the yeast to be added. Right now we're at 167, but it's, uh, thanks to the war chiller, it's already dropping pretty quickly. Now that we got some water in there, I'm gonna add some ice. cooling and it's gonna take half an hour and it's time to play some video game. Right, so now um, after I don't know 30 40 minutes or so our wort is cooled down to 80 degrees uh, which is the, the safe temperature for the yeast. Um, we can proceed to the last step of the brewing process which is uh, putting it in the fermenter here and adding the yeast. As you can see, there's a lot of leftover. We don't want it going in the uh, in the beer. Before we put the yeast in, we're going to add more water. We're going to top it up to five gallons. All right, so the final step here in the initial uh, brew day is to add the yeast, and uh, it's right here in this little packet. Um, it'll eat all those sugars, and it'll convert the sugars into alcohol. So we're just gonna sprinkle yeast on the surface here. Try to eat kind of evenly on the surface so it's all gone. And then I usually, you can either splash some more water or you can just give it a little stir with your spoon here. Stir it all in there. Put our lid on. And uh, we're ready. That's it. Brew day is done. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to do a secondary fermentation, how to transfer it to, um, to a carboy. And I'm gonna use a batch that I brewed a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's a pale ale. Um, it's gonna be probably a little bit hoppier than the Belgian ale we're brewing today, but kind of a similar style, you know, that, that good ale style. So um, let's open it up. I've got a big fat drum, big fat drum. I've got a big fat drum. Pawning some. So what secondary fermentation does is it filters out all the leftover stuff from the from the yeast doing their work. Because um, as the yeast feasts on all the sugars from the from the grain and the malt extract, it produces kind of a, a thick sludge kind of. They call it a yeast cake at the bottom. So by transferring this to another container, it's gonna filter out all that stuff that you don't want in the beer. Um, you know, all the stuff that's already done, it's already done its thing, it doesn't need to be in there anymore. And it's gonna give you um, better flavor, it's gonna give you a better uh, clarity on your beer. 
Um, so it should taste better, it'll look better. It'll probably have a nicer uh, head on the beer. Um, so yeah, you, it's optional, you don't have to do it, but it's, it's usually recommended to do a secondary fermentation. So we're gonna start our uh, auto siphon. Just gonna pump that a couple times to get it flowing. And it's fun. So we'll let that fill up. I've got a big fat drum. Big fat drum. I've got a big fat drum. Pawning some bad. I've got a big fat drum. Big fat drum. I've got a big fat, big fat, big, big, big. Listen! Big. So this is why we're doing the secondary fermentation. You can see all that sludge at the bottom. It's not mud, it's actually um, produced by the yeast. So it's kind of a byproduct that you obviously don't want winding up in your finished beer. Um, so we're just siphoning out all the liquid and putting it into that glass uh, carboy. Because we don't want that nasty stuff you know, winding up in our final, our final kegged beer. But it's just part of the process of making beer. It's not. It's not bad. It's just. It's just a byproduct of the fermentation process of, you know, making alcohol. So now we transferred uh, uh, the beer to our secondary fermenter. I'm just gonna pull the tubing out. Just stick that back in here for now. The stopper, put that in there right there, and then we'll grab an airlock. The airlock just does exactly what you think it would. It <laughs> keeps air from getting in, but allows gas to vent out. And then um, something else that's optional, but it really handy is uh, is one of these uh, handles for the carboy, because this is actually really heavy. Yeah, so that one's all good to go. We're just gonna uh, put that back in the closet in a nice dark place, uh, you know, for a couple weeks, and then it'll be ready to keg. Okay, so we're getting close to finishing our Belgian ale brewing process. We're gonna um, transfer the beer uh, to the keg. Uh, the beer's been sitting in secondary fermentation for a few weeks now, and so it's ready to be keg. One thing I like to do at this point in the process is to just take a little sample. Um, it won't be carbonated, so it's going to taste flat, but you'll get a sense of, of what the beer is going to taste like and you know whether you've um, made a drinkable beer or completely messed it up. Uh, so here's the moment of truth. Uh, as you can see, the beer's uh, flat. There's no head on it, there's no bubbles, but it does have a nice color to it, and uh, that's a good sign. I don't see a lot of um, particles floating around. Uh, it looks pretty clear and a nice Belgian ale color, so we're gonna just take a, take a sip.
ready to hook it up. All right, so this is a previous batch that I kegged a few days ago. Um, it's ready to drink, it's been cold. Uh, I've kept it out in the refrigerator in the garage for a few days, so it's, uh, it's nice and uh, drinkable. And now comes the most important part, it's time to drink beer. That's how we brew with Brian. So guys, that was the first episode of What's Brewing with Brian. I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and give us your feedback by writing in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And now, the most important part. It's time to enjoy the fruit of our labors. Cheers. Cheers. Ha, 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 ha.